fill here. Let me just close all of these things. Whew. Look at all this. An error has occurred. Today we're going to do a, just a brief intro to Adobe Premiere. Um, just to kind of walk you through the basics of what uh, is in this program, what it can do, what the different uh, things on the screen are. So let's open our Mountain Dew can. Mm, so great. And uh, get started. I have an intro button here I would like to try. Oh, so cool. All right, that's enough of that. Um, okay, so this, when you open up the program, is going to be your main... Um, project selector uh, kind of thing. You notice here I have tons of um, projects. We're going to make a new project just for the sake of this tutorial. Um, this has been changed recently. Prior to this version, the way you imported files was very different. But for right now, I'm pretty sure this is what it should look like for uh, all installs of Premiere Pro. You notice in the left-hand corner here, we have project names. We're going to do tutorial one. If you go to project location, I can choose my location. I'm going to go ahead and put that in here, and uh, that's good. If you wanted, you could already import some files into uh, this project, uh, but in this case, I don't need to. Uh, you can kind of, you know, go around and pull it here. We'll, we'll include this arrow computer icon symbol because, you know, why not? If I go ahead and hit create, it's going to load a default project, which is going to look just like this. So uh, a couple things you'll notice right off the bat. Now, your uh, layout might look a little bit different. I am using uh, the editing tab right here. This is a uh, different layouts for your screens. So it's possible it will launch like with learning or assembly or something like that. Um, I'm gonna be working with editing and we'll get into some of the other layouts later. Editing should look something like this. Up in the upper left-hand corner, You'll notice we have uh, project effects, essential graphics, and text. Project is going to be where you're going to have all of your files. So if, uh, like that you'll pull your video files and audio files and whatnot. So if you come over here and double click on an open space, it will actually open up, um, you know, a, a little box for you to select files. I'm just going to go ahead and import this random uh, project right there. Uh, I could also go up to file, import, um, and then it would do the same thing. I could also go to the import tab and find it, uh, and then you know I'd select media to import. Any of those things work. Uh, I usually just double click or hit Command I. Um, effects is where you're going to be able to get effects. Uh, this is pretty s straightforward. Um, but you know, uh, if you want blurs or if you want color grading stuff, uh, green screen key. Well, that's going to be in effect. Essential graphics, um, the browse is not relevant for right now. Edit is what you'll use to edit text. Text is how you'll do captions and transcripts and graphics and whatnot. Uh, right here is effect controls. Uh, I'll get there in a second. Actually, get to all of these in a second. The first thing you're going to want to do is create a sequence. Now, there are two ways of doing this. The first way is to make a sequence uh, with the parameters of a source video. So this video right here, does God have a body? I believe I just upscaled it to 4K. If I scroll over, um, yep, that's 4K. Um, if I just drag this and drop it on that little new note button right there, delete will delete it, that'll put it in the new folder. On that new note, it will make uh, a sequence of the same name as the name of the video. You'll notice right here, this is a video file, this is a sequence file, that's what that icon means. This is a picture which, we've, uh, which we imported at the beginning. There are multiple different ways to view this. Uh, you can view the icon view, which will actually show a display of all the videos. That's really great if you have a big project, lots of video files, lots of B-roll, and you're trying to find a clip you really like. Um, but it can slow things down uh, if you have too many projects. You also have freeform view where you can just drag stuff around. I have never used that. It seems useless. I almost always use uh, list view, and then I'll use folders right there to organize junk, to organize uh, what's in here. So, you know, you can put stuff in there and collapse it and whatnot. Um, if you ever want to preview something, um, you can either go to this icon view right here, or uh, you could also double click on any element, and it will open it in the source viewer over here on the right. Now, this is different than your main project view, which is going to be called the program view. So source, looking at the, the source files, program um, is what is on your timeline right down here. Oh, I actually forgot to plug this in. Let me plug this in and... There we go. Okay. Um, drag that down just a little bit. There we go. 
that's more manageable. Um, okay, so you'll notice when I dragged this in right here, it created what's called the timeline down here, and I also displayed that up there, and we also got a whole bunch of things in the effect controls. Uh, now, this sequence is a 4K sequence at 2997 frames per second, or 30 frames a second, just about, uh, which, b because we took whatever the that source video was and made a sequence, sequence around it. But let's say I don't want a 4K uh, sequence. Let's say I'm making a, a TikTok video or something, and I want the aspect ratio that looks like a phone. I'm going to control or command Z or control Z and undo the making of that sequence real quick. Go back to where we were a little bit ago. I can also come down and click this new item. And there's a couple different options it'll give me. Um, you know, adjustment files, black video, transparent video. Sequence is what we want. When you go to sequence, it's going to pop up with available presets. Um, I have custom ones, but you won't, um, unless you've made the exact same custom presets as I, which would be impressive. Uh, but we're going to just guess you didn't do that. You can choose one of these. Uh, a lot of times, like, you know, this one right here, the HDV uh, 1080p, 30 frames a second. Uh, that, that could be fine, but I... I I don't know why there's so many different ones. I don't know what all these things represent. So I go over to settings and I do it manually. First thing is um, I go to custom editing mode, time base. I want 29.97 frames a second. Frame size in a traditional TikTok, it's not 16.9. Uh, uh, oh, also, this pixel aspect ratio, it's going to throw you off if you don't do square pixels. So that's 1.0, not the anamorphic. We're not, we're not that cool. Um, this right now is a 4-3 aspect. What we, if we, the, the normal aspect ratio for a video is 1920 by 1080. That's 16.9. So TikTok is the inverse of that, or shorts are the inverse. It's going to be 1080 by 1920, and that's going to be 916 aspect ratio. Color space is probably going to default to whatever your computer is. Don't worry about that. Uh, code, uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, this will all probably be different depending on if you're on Windows. And then I can name my sequence and say, um, Bradley is the coolest uh, version three because clearly I've made two other versions of this before. Now we have a blank sequence down here and you'll notice up in the top right corner our, uh, our little uh, preview box is what a phone would look like, like uh, a short format. Now if I drag my file, my video file onto this, see I could kind of move it around. It's going to ask, this clip does not match the sequence settings. That's because we're dropping a 4K video into a um, 1080 by 1920 uh, sequence. So I can either uh, change the sequence settings, which will adjust the sequence we just made to match the video, or I can keep existing settings, which in this case is what I want. Now you'll notice that looks like straight garbage. God bow. That's, that's, uh, that's not, not what we're wanting. Um, so, uh, what's going on here is a 4K video has the, yeah, it's bigger than uh, this shorts aspect ratio. So, we actually have, if I, you notice I'm coming up here into the, my mouse got bigger, into the effect controls under motion. This is selected. Position will change the relative position of this on my program. I can even put it off screen if I want. Um, but, you know, that's not super catchy for a video. Um, I can also scale, so I can really look at nose hairs if I want. Um, in this case, uh, I can scale out to, what is that, right around 80 or 90, per, say, 90 percent. Um, and there, now that at least his head is kind of in center frame. I can also go down which uh, to, you know, something like this where I'll fit more of the frame in. Um, but I don't know. That doesn't look as good to me. I think it's actually less catchy on shorts. But the point is, you can come up here and adjust where this video is uh, under this effects control box. Um, you can even change it. So uh, right here, there's a little stopwatch. This is something called keyframing. Keyframing is uh, something you just have to learn if you're going to edit video. Uh, let's say I really wanted this to zoom in. I could hit the, the stopwatch on scale. And that would mean at this frame in the video, I have, uh, I'm at 30.3% um, scale. Let's say at this point of the video, I want to zoom in to 120 uh, scale. You'll notice all it's going to do is transition between those two um, 
And then once it hits that particular frame, it'll stop and stay on whatever it is. So I could, oh, that's gonna be a long time to get through that, but you kind of get the idea. I make this bigger. It's slowly zooming in uh, to fill screen. Uh, so I can animate scale and position and a whole bunch of stuff like that right here. Um, there's tons that you can do within Premiere. I'll just uh, walk you through a couple things. Uh, you can come over here and make text. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, because I like meat. Meat. Um, and then, you know, over here under effect controls, we have text, so we can change our font and our font size and all that stuff. And we can also do it over here in Essential Graphics, too. Uh, I'm not going to worry about all that right now. But the point is you can make text um, and animate that. You can, you know, draw shapes. Woo, look at that nice gray box. And when you draw a shape, what it's going to do is it's going to put it right here on your timeline. And notice it will bloop pop up when it's there, and then it will and physically bloop go away once it's done. If I want to change that, all I have to do is hover. Yeah, yeah, I want to make sure I'm on my arrow key. The shortcut key for this is V. I'm going to hover over there and see how my icon changes. I just click and drag, and I can make this bigger in either direction. Let's say I want to cut it in two. I can hit either this razor tool or C. It's the shortcut. I can cut it, and now I have two of them. So, you know, this is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them, as the new Gunray would say in Star Wars Episode One. Anyways, um, you know, all, all sorts of stuff uh, you can do with that. Uh, down here with this, it, you know, if I was actually editing a short, um, you know, I would push this in. And notice I have a keyframe. I actually want to unclick this to make sure that I don't have keyframes. Uh, I will position this. I'll go through and watch, and I will cut it up into a bunch of little clips, and then I will uh, adjust them. And then I will go through and say, I want this to be zoomed in more. I want this one to be zoomed in less. Uh, and I'll kind of put them on different tracks. Then I'll come here and I'll copy. You have to actually click motion there. I'll copy this onto the next video to quickly do all of them. I can actually drag and get a whole bunch of them if I want and copy it over uh, pretty easily. The point is, uh, with cutting and adjusting and moving and the effects control things, you can do most things that you need to do. Um, I'll go through more specific tutorials later, but let's say, also don't ever forget to save. Save, just save, just learn to save all the time. Okay, let's say I have finished my short. I think this looks pretty good with that nose right there. Um, I'm just gonna hit I to I and O. I and O creates an in point and an out point and your video will only render what's in that in to out point. Let's say I wanted to render. I go up here to export. And boom, it's loaded a whole new thing. I have presets, but probably going to have match source uh, adaptive high bit rate. Uh, you over here can choose a folder. We'll choose downloads. I actually have a folder called render folder where I put all my renders. Bradley is the coolest V3. Great name. Um, under video, I'll just walk through the settings I normally do when I export. Frame size, we want 10, 1080 by 1920 to get that aspect ratio. Frame rate, 2997. Field order, this sometimes is set to lower first. Always set this to progressive. Uh, aspect ratio should be 1.0, but that you get that from the sequence. Um, if I'm doing just a short, I don't worry about these. If I'm doing a, a nicer video, I will render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality. Um, and I'll adjust some of these. I, but for shorts, I don't worry. The other thing that matters is this bitrate settings. Under bitrate encoding, uh, just always choose VBR 2 pass. And then uh, for target bitrate, I do 12. And for maximum bitrate, I do 20 when it comes to shorts. And then you hit export. And uh, it will pop out that whole video, uh, just like you asked, and uh, put it wherever you told it to go, uh, unless it fails. If it fails, then you'll spend the next three days Googling, calling people, and agonizing over uh, some really dumb bug, like a screensaver is interfering with the code in the program. That has happened before. It's terrible. Anyways, so that's a basic tutorial of Premiere. Uh, I know that's very top level, but uh, main things right here, your project folder, your timeline. Uh, down here, you have your razor tool to cut stuff up. Um, this tool right here to move stuff around. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much that. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out, let me know, and I would be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching, and uh, we got to end, or we must end, with a pretty epic sounding intro. So um, my name is Bradley. Thank you for watching my tutorials with Bradley. And uh, until next time, see ya.
Come on, that's so cool. Okay, all right.